Please be seated. Merry Christmas. It's exciting this time of year always just invigorates me. It gets me super excited because this is what life is truly all about. It's about worshiping and glorifying our Savior, about doing what God created us to do, what God created you to do, whatever that may be in your individual journey, whatever trials and tribulations you are going through. And let me say to you that if you are going through trials and tribulations, that's part of the Christian plight. And so I want to welcome all of those here that are joining us in our waterfront sanctuary and those that are joining us online as well. And a special warm welcome to uh, those military men and women personnel and first responders that are joining us from abroad. We appreciate you and we know that you are here with us in spirit. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this worship service, and we pray that all of the messages here, whether spoken or unspoken, are experienced by everyone. Father God, we pray that the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth are pleasing to you, O oh, Father, our rock and our redeemer. And all of God's children say, Amen. Amen. Well, this is the time of year when, when you can kind of feel it. You can feel the nostalgia. You can hear a buzz in the air. Maybe you can feel it just here being with us in, in worship and in the sanctuary when we start to sing or when we're doing fellowship or handshakes, high fives, and hugs. Those hugs just seem warmer and those, those hymns that we sing just seems to enlighten the room. In a few days is the night when God sent out a love letter of cosmic proportion. It's the night when Christ entered our world. It's the night when Christ came to us fully man and fully God. As the song states, in the air there's a feeling of Christmas. It permeates everything that we are, everything that we are doing today. This is the time of year when nostalgia runs deep. And nobody dares, I would hope, act like a Scrooge. Except those people on 95 that seem to be driving around me. Christmas is this very special time of the year. And maybe you're sitting next to someone today. Friend, family loved one, someone that's come in from out of town, or someone you just don't have time to spend with. And they finally made it here. Maybe you're with them online, and, and it's great to have them here. Or other people have reached out to me, and they said, Pastor, would you please pray for me? Because my mother-in-law coming to town, and I would like to make sure that everything is, is Christmassy, <laughs> and that it maintains Christmassy, and we don't bridge that gap. 
Or maybe some of those people that are at the forefront of your mind are not here. They're not here with you physically today. They walk with you, not physically, but they walk with you spiritually. That means they're more present. During this Christmas season, it's easy to forget what is important. The true meaning of Christmas is not found in the wrappings. It's not found in running to the stores, but it is found in the gift. Charlie Brown is one of my favorite family traditions. And, and now that we got a little baby, right, I see the people with kids, right, going, oh, yeah, Charlie Brown's back. It just lit up my world when I was a little kid, right, Gloria? I mean, you remember Charlie Brown picks, picks out this lonely tree with only a, a few branches on it for the Christmas pageant. He's responsible for the whole Christmas pageant. And when he brings it back, Everyone mocks him. Like, really, man? That's the tree that you got us? This terrible looking tree, and it bends over, and needles keep falling off of it, which in turn makes Charlie Brown all the more depressed. And in despair, Charlie Brown cries out, Doesn't anyone know what Christmas is all about? And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. He shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Drop the mic. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Is there anyone who knows what Christmas Just push is all about? Just push the button about? down. Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. <laughs> In case you missed it the first time, we want to make sure that you got Charlie Brown. But that's what Christmas is all about, right? Christmas is all about the gift. It's about being together. It's, a, it's about that love. It's about God with us. It's about God coming into our world to touch us. Christmas Eve is coming up. And it's the time when the veil between heaven and earth is so thin that you can almost see through it. There's a sense there of, of spirituality. And this upcoming Christmas Eve is the night. Now think about this. Christmas Eve is the night that we measure all time against. Jesus' birth. On this one night, God chose to, to, to come to this world in human flesh. Heaven literally came down. The gospel of Jesus is the greatest love story ever told. And I wish with all my heart that everyone that reads the gospel would read it in that light. That everyone would know and experience the love of our Lord and Savior. The birth of Christ, Christmas, is the most classic love story ever told. And here's the great part of it. You are 
the main character. It's you. We've known of this love since childhood, right? I mean, Jesus loves me, this I know. Do I continue to sing? No? Is that bad? For the Bible tells me so. Ha! That's all you're going to get. But consciously or, or subconsciously, most people this time of the year are truly trying to catch a glimpse of God. They know that there's something there special. And even if they're not Christian, they're looking at us. There's a person that goes to school with my little girl. And she's seven years old. And her mother makes no qualms of pointing it out to me as frequently as she can. We do not believe in God. And I said, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. There's something there that we are consciously or subconsciously trying to catch, trying to get a glimpse of. There's something woven in our DNA that says this thirst that you have, that God has put into your life, heart, and soul, you can only quench with Christ. And to point something out like that to me continually, if you really didn't believe, wouldn't make any sense. That like me saying I don't like lemonade. Why would I keep repeating that to someone? If, unless I really want to try some of the Kool-Aid or try some of the lemonade. But Christmas is that time of year when, when people make that extra effort to find the real meaning, to find joy, to find real peace in their lives. This is when many people make an effort to look into the heart of God. Imagine the world at the time of Jesus' birth. Just imagine what Mary saw. The world was a very busy place. People were traveling back and forth, right? They, they had to go and register from their hometowns due to this proclamation that Caesar Augusta made. And Mary and Joseph were just some of those people that had to go from one town to another. There's so much hustle and bustle. Everyone was so busy because they had to get to their towns. They had to, you know, pack up and like, I forgot my hair gel this morning. You got to get that. There were so many travelers. Mary and Joseph were just one of many. And similar to when I travel, we get someplace and I have to go out and tell my wife, oop, <laughs> no room for us. Forgot to make the reservation. There's no room for them at the inn. And so Mary gives birth to the son in the manger. But most people didn't even know this. They missed the very presence of God. It's not that people were not interested in God. Most of the people were caught up in the busyness of their own lives. They had stuff to do, and they, they ended up ignoring God, and he was right there. It's funny, the world hasn't changed much. I find myself running around like a chicken with his head cut off, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, people, oh, they, they want to talk to you or say hi. And I don't have time. i got to get a present for my little baby. You never know when you're going to be entertaining angels. And many of us have, unaware. The world hasn't changed. There's still the craziness of get it done right now, get it, get it done in my schedule. No matter how busy you are, deep down in your soul, there is this desire to look into the heart of God. He loves you unconditionally. He goes before you, and you know he does. So this morning, today, I'm going to walk into Bethlehem, near the manger, and stand next to Mary. And I want you to see what Mary was able to see. 
Let me help you. You're close. learn a lot from a video. What the countryside was like, what it looked like for them. The idea that, that Joseph had to carry her. What that looked like. So what does Mary see? She sees a baby. She starts listening for a heartbeat. I mean, any parent would do that. Yet she sees something much more. And she remembers the promise of God. She recalls those promises of the visitation of the angel and she stares into the face of that child. 
And realize Mary's a teenager. She's a baby. And she realizes when she stares in to the face of that child that she is staring into the very heart of God himself. And then the shepherds arrive and they tell her this story which validates everything that she has been experiencing. They tell her what the angel has said to them and they crowd around the manger and they gaze into the face of this little baby. And as they do, they realize that they are gazing into the very heart of God. The shepherds leave and the scriptures tell us that Mary ponders all of these things in her her heart. I can't imagine what's going through her head. Everything in her world is right there. Everything that her busy neighbors and friends could ever ask for, everything that you are looking for is lying in the manger right there. The key to understanding God, the key to understanding the meaning of life, the key to eternity is right there lying in the manger. And then she picks up the baby and she hands the baby to you. And there you stand holding in your arms the one and the only Son of God. And as you look into his face, you realize that you too are looking into the very heart of God. Try and picture that with me. In your arms, you have everything that the world is truly longing for. And while the rest of the world is moving around, there you are in the quiet of the night, looking into the face of this child. And you're looking into the very heart of God himself. Why? Why would God do that? And then you look outside and you see a shadow. And it's a bright night. And one of the stars seems to be brighter than the other stars. Yet you also see another shadow. You see a shadow of a cross. And then you truly understand why this child came to the world. He came to give you life, eternal life. And you can't help but feel a little bit saddened as you look into the face of this child knowing that all he will be and all he will suffer. And then you take the child and you hand the child back to Mary. And before you walk away, you take one last look. And you see God's love for you and his mercy and his wisdom. His forgiveness and his grace. God has touched you. The Christ child lives inside of you. He has touched you today. In a few days, we're all gonna get gifts. Millions of of gifts, some will fit, some will go back, but there is one gift that meets all the needs. 
One gift that never breaks. One gift that will never wear out. One gift that works for a, a child, for a teenager, for an adult, for a senior citizen. It's appropriate for a boy, for a, a girl, a man, a woman, my friends, the most valuable gift on the planet ever is Jesus Christ. Yes. And it was given to you. And he promises that if you will trust him, if you will accept him as your Lord and Savior, his free gift, that he will set you free from sin and death. You will have everlasting, eternal life. And he'll fill you with peace and, and joy in the world. And no, you're not going to have a perfect life. And you will be joyful in those times of trial when Christ lives within you. A joy that cannot be taken away. A, a peace that passes and surpasses all understanding. The angels on that day declared it. They made it no secret. And I looked for something as close as I could get to an angel. And what did they say, Biggie? Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, goodwill to men. Amen. There's a story about a Christmas pageant. And this Christmas pageant is like life itself. It never works out quite as planned. It's kind of like technology in a church. And there was a nine-year-old boy in this Christmas pageant. His name was Willie, and he was a special needs boy. He was bigger than most. And he wanted to be a shepherd in the Christmas pageant. That was his dream. But they said, you know, we're going to give you a bigger part. You're going to be the innkeeper. For when Mary and Joseph show up. And it came to Willie's partners, a knock at the door. And Willie walked up just as the innkeeper should. And he saw Mary and Joseph standing there. And he said, there is no room at the inn. And the person playing the part of Joseph perfectly said, but sir, we've tried elsewhere. We have traveled a long way and we are weary. We are very tired. And Willie did as the line said. He responded, go away. There's no room. At the end. And the person playing Joseph sadly placed his arms around Mary, and as they began to move off stage, the Christmas pageant was about to end perfectly. And as they start moving off stage, they hear a voice, and it's Willie. And he says, Wait! <laughs> Wait! Don't go, Joseph! Don't go! Bring it back! I can't do it! And his face grew into this giant smile. He said, listen, man, you can have my room. I can't do it. And I'll sleep out in the cold. Where's the manger? You see, Willie caught the very spirit of, of Christmas. A heart of giving, a heart of self-sacrifice. My friends, the child in that manger is the light of the world. Even when our world is in total shambles, he is the perfectly divine God. And he is the perfectly human 
He's been there, done that. He tore the veil between heaven and earth. And that means that we can have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God himself. Amen. Amen. Christmas is where we find the Christ of God intersecting with all of humanity. The question is, do you have room for him? Do you have room for him at the inn of your heart? When Mary touched that newborn baby, she was touching the very heart of God. Jesus is our living, breathing sign of immeasurable love. Christmas Eve is coming up. It's a night when God sent out this love letter. And make no mistake, I am talking to you. And you are the main character. We gather today in his name, embraced in his love. Christmas is the living promise that we are never, ever alone. No matter where life takes you, no matter what speed bumps you run into, no matter what condition you find yourself in, no matter how far away we might stray or how unfaithful we have been, he relentlessly pursues you and loves you. God in all his love will continue to pursue you. So my friends, I ask you, please, take this Christmas to look into the heart of God, to fully experience his love. For it's a love that never stops shining. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. You can put Christ first in your life right now. If you have not made that commitment, if you're deciding to make that commitment, if you want to recommit to Christ, you can do that right here and right now and receive his free gift of grace. If you want to commit yourself to Jesus Christ for the purpose that he created you for, and you want a proper perspective on God, your life will be transformed from the inside out. And it keeps going. It's an awesome ride. You can make that commitment right now by simply bowing your head and saying this prayer with me. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and I invite you to come into my heart. I, I want to trust you and follow you as my Lord and Savior. <clears throat> Father God, you came from eternity into time and space. <clears throat> you came as our Savior. You were born so that I can have everlasting life. You're born to give a second birth in the Holy Spirit and, and gather together as a unified body of Christ so that we may worship and praise you and give you all the glory. Thank you, Father God, for wrapping yourself up in human flesh and manifesting yourself as the baby Jesus. Any other king would have come as a royal entourage. No room at the inn was your plan. 
You humbled yourself with immeasurable humility and you died on the cross so that I may have everlasting life. Father, I want to feel the Holy Spirit permeate my life. Just as Mary touched the heart of God, I, I want to reconcile my heart with your heart. Transform my life so that I may fully experience your love in this Christmas season and forever. Father God, I pray through the power and authority of Jesus Christ to put the Christ back into Christmas. And we lift up all of these things in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people say, Amen. Oh, God's glory for all the glory of God. This church, I, you know, there's times when you just don't have words. You're so humbled. The whole idea that we get to come together and, and worship together as, as Christ's family, that he brought us together, whether you're sitting here, whether you're online, God's brought us together. My wife often wonders why sometimes. <laughs> why he brings people together. But we learn and we leverage and we live together and we leverage each other's talents for his grace and for his glory. And God talks about putting our gifts first. The best fruit. This is the time of the, the year when we start saying, would you please consider an end of the year gift so that this ministry may continue to bring glory and praise and exist for the reason that God created it. This church embraces what we call radical generosity. It changes communities. It changes the world. It is transforming Fort Lauderdale, and it is promoting a revival here. When you give to Florida Faith Church, you become part of a story that changes people's lives for eternity. We have people here, we have people online that have just accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Glory to God. We have all sorts of missions. We feed the homeless and the hungry through St. Lawrence Chapel. We were out there feeding the homeless and hungry in the Thanksgiving Day. We have these great fellowship events. You heard of them tonight of caroling, cocoa, and cookies. We go to concerts together. We fly down and we blue tarp roofs. We had people fly over to Abacoa last week. We do 5Ks. We have a children's ministry where we brought in over 100 children for vacation Bible school. We helped to start a philanthropic organization called Operation Aquatic Freedom where we work with active military and vets that are suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome. We take them kayaking. And we are baptizing people. We are following the great commandment that Jesus left us with. And he said, go and baptize people in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our ministry and missions are poised to change and transform the world. And you are invited to come alongside us. And we need you. God calls us to give back. And whether that's with your time, we need your time. <laughs> we have so many events, we need people to help us organize those events. Whether that's with your talents, you will see um, on the next slide, if you go to slide before this, nope, keep going. There's a lady up, up north in the church, and she uses her talents to make these crosses. I'm wearing one around my neck, they're nails. And she glues them together, and she wraps copper wire around them, different colors. She uses her talents for the kingdom. And your financial resources. If you give to Florida Faith Church, if you download our, our app and you click on Give, 
then we're going to capture that information and we would like to send you one of these crosses as a thank you. You can go to our website, floridafaithchurch.com, download our app. You can text the word Faith Give to 77977. You can give any amount. We pass baskets around. Some of you have to go home and pray on it. That's okay. And be obedient. You know how much God has blessed you and you know how much you can give. Let the offering begin. It's over? <laughs> well, fine. Let's sing. This revival and spreading like a wildfire in my heart. A Sunday morning, hallelujah. And it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of a gospel song. Thank you.